let me let me just challenge you a little bit here. And I say this as as someone who was raised by a pack of lawyers and 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 did a, a year of law school and still remains you know fascinated by all these things. Like where does where does that begin? Right, like, like you just used examples of how Kennedy basically orchestrated it, this whole thing to get Kavanaugh on there, you know, and, and there's been you know various different reporting about it, and we, we could probably argue to like what extent he did, but certainly Ginsburg and Breyer refused to sort of contemplate the idea that they would step down and, and sort of like put that type of strategy in their forefront of their minds. It's certainly their prerogative, um, and. You know the the idea that we need to to win the political battle, but we we hear stories of like you know what was done with Fortis and the idea of like Merrick Garland, and I see Chris Coons going on the air you know uh, six months ago and saying if we win back the Senate, the first thing we should do is reinstitute the the filibuster for ju- for for justices. I mean, this is like at, at, at what point do and it, this comes from lawyers, and I and I understand it, right? I mean, like I say, I was raised by a lot of them. At what point do does the sort of the the broader institution of law, as opposed as distinct from, let's say, the conservative movement and all the lawyers who make up uh, who are who 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 sort of that that Venn di- diagram covers both of them? At what point do they say we're going to give up the ghost? on the Supreme Court not being a political body. Because it seems to me that, you you know, you've outlined that at the very least, the Republicans more aggressively gave up that ghost 50 years ago. But I, you know, I think you can argue that coming out of Reconstruction, they had given up that ghost. It's just that um, the, 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 the Democrats, the left, they don't seem to sort of be able to sort of let go of that vision of the Supreme Court. I think that's right. And I think as a result, you know, they're bringing, you know, a a, a water gun to a knife fight. I mean, you know, um, McConnell has been very clear, you know, he he refused to, you know, have any uh, hearings at all for um, Merrick Garland. And then he went out of his way to tell a Kentucky audience not long ago, of course, if there were a vacancy in the last year of the Trump administration, we would certainly fill that. I mean, he is, you know, he, he's thumbing his nose at Democrats and basically saying, you know, we don't play by any rules. We're not trying to be ethical or principled. It's all about power for us. And I think liberals need to get more in that mindset. And, you know, you do think about, you know, Will Rogers saying, you know, I'm not a member of an organized political party. I'm a Democrat. Um, there's a way in which Republicans are just better at organizing themselves to, to win power. So I don't know that for a fact that um, Anthony Kennedy, you know, uh, talked with the White House about his successor, as has been reported, certainly, and, and did anything like that. But, you know, it does appear that he did resign at a time when he wasn't that that old. He wasn't in terrible health. It was the last moment he knew that a Republican president could name a successor with for sure a Republican Senate. Republicans tend to do that in their statistics on how they're just much better at passing their conservative seats onto fellow conservatives. That just isn't the Democratic mindset. And, you know, if we want to once again get rulings on behalf of the people we care about, I think Democrats need to think in those, you know, really uh, very calculating ways much more. I mean, where does that start? I mean, because, you know, the, the right, their voters are also a lot more tuned in to the implications of the court. I mean, there's as, you know, uh, of the myriad of reasons why uh, Donald Trump, you know, but for as to why Donald Trump won, one of them very well could be because uh, Mitch McConnell kept that seat open. And, uh, and, and so where, I mean, where does this start? Like, I guess what I'm asking is, you know, why aren't you, I don't mean to pick on you, but why aren't you um, coming out and saying, we got to pack the court. We got to give up the ghost. This is a, a political body, and this, at the very least, will uh, force voters who vote from the center to the left to understand the implications of the court because they clearly don't now. Yeah, no, I hear you, and uh, you know, I'm I'm not quite there in court packing, but I, I, I see that you know, desperate times may require desperate measures. But I think, you know, what we could all agree is it needs to be much more central to this political campaign. Like, you know, a lot of us are very upset that we watch these, you know, 
debates. And uh, the Supreme Court does not come up, right? The, the moderators often ask some pretty ridiculous questions. It, it should be, there should be much more focus on the Supreme Court. The Democratic candidate should have talked about it more and talked about it in a way that actually got to the swing voter. I mean, in my book, I show how, you know, the court has really hurt um, the middle class, right? I mean, if you want to, if you want to be a member of a union, if you want to have a minimum wage, if you want the, your politics not to be controlled by the rich just one percent of my corporations, you need a different Supreme Court. And this should be front and center. Um, and, you know, Biden did say he would name an African-American woman to the court. Great. But how about talking about naming justices who will stop the, you know, plutocratic takeover of a lot of our society? That that should be much more in the Democratic playbook every day. Adam Cohen, the book is Supreme Inequality, the Supreme Court's 50-year battle for a more unjust America. We will put a link to the book on the site at uh, majority.fm. Thanks so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. I enjoyed it, Sam. Thank you.